Hello everyone out there, this is Pastor Tony Galanti coming back to you again with another video on Prophecy in Christ above all. Today I want to talk to you about a situation. I had a conversation with a, a nice young lady. She's, you know, a little bit younger than me, you know. Her name is Mary. <laughs> she knows who she is. She's going to hear this. And she said she had a wonderful, a little conversation, a conversation with a friend on... <clears throat> Are we supposed to be Christians or followers of Christ? Well, the idea is this. I, you know, she said, maybe you should do a video on this. I said, yeah, I'll do one. That's good. Okay. <clears throat> and um, she, um, She mentioned basically that she talked to a friend and this, this buddy of hers, I guess. Um, he said, you know, there are so many different organizations out there, so many different types of churches. And, so, you know, which one do you go to to be, a, you know, which what's the best one and so on and so forth and all these other different things. And I'm going to be honest with you, I believe it's Baptist Church, but there are a lot of, there are some Baptist organizations. There's an organization that will also have some very liberal ministers within certain Baptist churches. There are Baptist churches out there that are very straight and do it right. They look at the doctrines of Jesus Christ and they live according to that. And that's the way it's supposed, supposed to be. Sometimes traditions come into churches too, okay? Like, um, I'll give you an example. Um, you know, D.L. Moody, I don't know if you know who D.L. Moody is. Some of you may know him, some of you may not, but he was like the American Billy Graham in the 18th century, okay? And he was a short, you know, short, stout guy, kind of like me, big, you know, stoutish, stoutish, you know. You could say, well, whatever. <laughs> but stout, okay? He was a shoe salesman, but he was a very great evangelist, see? And, you know, this is the other thing, too, within, within America, you know, if you're a good speaker within other reasons, automatically the church wants to put you out there and do some speaking. And you can have no spiritual gifts to do it. But you might have the natural talent to speak. And that doesn't necessarily make the body of Christ stronger. It would be good, better that if you had a, a you know, a, a um, department store worker, let's say, who has the gift of evangelism, or maybe the gift of teaching, or the gift of prophecy, only in the sense of knowing the truths of the scripture, not some, you know, pie in the sky idiocy stuff that the next week there's going to be a hurricane over here or the other side of the world is going to have a tornado. No, none of that stupid stuff. Prophecy in the Bible always points to Christ and that's where we stay in the Bible and that's it. Okay. And we all need to be humble enough to understand that. And what does humility mean? It means you're always under God's word. That's what it means. Okay, and your personality is your personality, and sometimes people are going to get you, understand you for your personality, and sometimes they're not going to understand you. And you know what I have to say to that? That's not my problem. It's theirs. Okay, and that's not being arrogant. Okay, because people don't know what you were like before you accepted Christ. They don't know that side. Okay, and it's Christ who brought this out of me. Okay, I'll go anywhere and preach the gospel. Okay, but. Uh, you know, before I couldn't even get in front of a classroom. I was all over the place. I mean, I'm not the best speaker now either, but I'll preach the gospel if I have to, you know, if I have to. But anyhow, um, and it's Christ who gives me the boldness for it. So, um, so is it better to be a Christian or is it better to follow Christ? Well, first of all, if you're a Christian, you're supposed to be a disciple of Christ. To be called a Christian is just a nominal thing, like, yeah, I accepted Christ, and I'm just going to go live the way I want to live. And I don't know, is that really a Christian? I don't know. But the fact of the matter is a disciple of Christ will learn and want to learn and keep wanting to learn, okay? And you may not have the spiritual gifts of teaching or uh, preaching or, uh, you know, uh, encouragement per se, because encouragement is part of preaching too, uh, or... Um, you know, ruling is another one part of it. You know, that kind. Of, you may not have those gifts. You may have mercy. You may have gi a giving and, and things like that. But, you know, you still need to study the scripture because you want to know 
when to give and who to give to and, you know, how to give and not give to some organization that's going to just throw your money away. You know, like, I don't mean that in a facetious way either. All right. But anyhow, you, you learn these things as you move forward as a disciple, a disciplined learner of Christ. And how do you become disciplined? By going through the scriptures, okay? Going through the scriptures, getting yourself a good study Bible, all right? I particularly like the open Bible. It's got notes in there that teach you the different doctrines of the faith. It teaches you about salvation. It teaches you about all these things. Now, you see, I'm going to, get, I'm going to tell you some tools today as well, too, because this is very important, because there are people all in many different type churches some who are just don't care about much, all right? And some who really want to get down and understand the Bible in every way possible, okay? For me personally, I prefer a uh, more of a Baptist type, Baptistic type church, okay? That's very doctrinally strong. If I go into a Baptist church and I ask them, do you have a doctrinal statement? And they say, no, I walk out. That's it. The Bible's my doctrinal statement. No, that's wrong. You have to give me a statement on the major teachings, major, major truths of the scripture. All right? Like you believe in the, the word of God. Okay? The Bible's the word of God. Uh, the virgin birth. You know, that Jesus Christ is the son of God, which means he is God. Right? There's a triunity, a trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You believe in the Holy Spirit. And so on and so forth. Okay? Others, too. There's about, ah, about eight or nine of them, you know? And uh, I actually wrote a book to show you this and teach you this, okay? See, it's called Raw Christianity, the Way Jesus Christ Expects Us All to Know It. This is written for the saved, you know, those who really believe in Christ, and those who are not saved and they want to become saved, you know? Or And uh, a lot of pastors have asked me, why did you put the message of salvation, you know, the, the prayer in the front of the Bible, book? I said, because you know what? If they're the only person around, I want them to accept Christ and understand the Bible and the book in a better way because the Holy Spirit will teach them. The Holy Spirit will come in and teach you, okay? Um, but let me read you this verse in Romans chapter 8, verse 29, okay? It's just very simple, okay? For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed. See, it's a, that's the thing. It's a conformity of Christ, to Christ. Trying to be like Christ. That doesn't mean your personality is going to change. Okay? All right? To become conformed to, the, to uh, the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Okay? And, you know, this is all through predestination. It says in the next verse here. And whom he predestined, these he also called. And whom he called, these he also justified. See, justification is another major doctrine. And if you don't know what justification is, it's really, it's, you can get real deep into that. But let me just tell you real quickly what it means, okay? Just another, it's, it, it, it's not just as if I've never sinned, that's forgiveness, okay? But justification means that God the Father looks through the blood of Christ and he sees you or, and me in believing in his son. And we're his child because of it. Because we believe in the blood of Christ. Okay? That's a very, you know, elementary way of saying it. But it's, it's very powerful too. Okay? All right. And, to, and whom he justified, these he also glorified. Okay. Now, Paul is talking about, you know, these, these things. The victory in Christ and so on and so forth. But... And in verse, you know, we're in chapter 8. But, you know, Paul is also talking about suffering, too. Because you suffer, or you're going through trials and tribulations and all kinds of things, and things happen, this person don't like you, and that person can't stand you at all, or something broke, or somebody broke their, you know, it, it, you know is in bad health. It's, you know, I want you to understand that God's love never leaves you as a believer, Okay. I'm going to go into this, uh, okay, last couple of verses, okay, of uh, chapter um, uh, chapter 8 of Romans, okay? Okay, here it goes. For I am convinced, Paul is saying, for I am convinced that neither death, okay, 
nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor light, uh, uh, nor things to things present, okay, nor things to come, nor powers. He's talking about angels, you know, different types of angels, powers and principalities and so on and so forth. These are powerful angels that are not for the Lord. Okay, a lot of them. He's saying, I don't care what 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 goes on. This is what happens. Okay, he says, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in who is that? Christ Jesus. Our Lord. Remember, he's always the Lord first. Then he's your Savior. Okay? And it's a very important factor. Everybody says, oh, Jesus saved me. Jesus saved me. And that's true. He saved you. But he's because he's your Lord. He is kind, but he's not going to put up with anything. Okay? And um, so how do you grow in Christ? How do you know... If you're in the right situation, and maybe, or maybe you need to move from there. First of all, if the death, burial, and resurrection is not being preached in your church, or uh, the word sin is not anywhere in a sermon or whatever, there's something wrong there, okay? And I, I'm going to tell you, there's a majority of people out there who are not doing it, okay? If somebody holds up their Bible and say, oh, this is my Bible, and we believe everything about it, and they put it down, and they never open it up, something wrong there, of course. That's the opposite end of the scale. Um, and remember, I was, I was talking about tradition, should I say? I, I, I was talking about Dale Moody, and I think I got went off on a, another part of conversation. Dale Moody was the evangelist of the, of the of last century, you know, 18th century, per se, or 19th century, whatever, like the 1800s, okay? Let's put it that way. All right. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's the 19th century. Um, so he was short, he was stout, okay, and um, he went over to England and he met the, the so called man who was known to be the evangelist of England and you know, I guess Ireland and Scotland and Wales and maybe even in Europe, I don't know, all of Europe, and his name was Charles Spurgeon. Okay, and Charles Spurgeon, Moody walked right up to him. He met him for the first time. Spurgeon was smoking a cigar. Okay, and Moody was short and stout. And Moody, and I always say this nine times, 99 times out of 100, is always an American who opens their mouth first and attacks somebody from another country who's a Christian. And they shouldn't be doing that because that's what we do. That's what, that's what we do. We want to now not because they, we think we have freedom to do that. No. We have liberty in Christ to do certain things, not to go running all the people. And when it comes to doctrine, you have a right to stand up for it. Okay, that's a different th thing. Okay, so anyhow, um, Moody goes up to Spurgeon. He looks at him. Spurgeon's tall and slim with a big cigar in his mouth. He goes, you know, Spurgeon, he says, that offends me. Yeah, he says, yeah, really? with his cigar in his mouth, and I'm not encouraging smoking. He said, you know what, Moody, that offends me. And he's pointing to his stomach, in other words, right? You know, these are what we go through, okay? Different people, different nations, different, you know, different cultures have different things, but we can't say, you're not saved because you smoke, and you're not saved because you drink, and you're not saved because you're, you know, overweight. No. And you're not saved if you're skinny, too. I mean, what the heck, right? Uh, another thing that went on. Um, Americans went over to Germany one time, right? I'll give another example of traditions and people pointing fingers. And this happens a lot here. I've seen it all the time. Um, America went over to Germany, and these were Christians, you know. But they went over for some kind of a conference. And the men, after the conference from Germany, would go out. And they'd go out to a, you know, a, a bar, a pub. And the bars and pubs over there are different than the bars and pubs over here. And I'm not encouraging alcohol, okay? Please, remember that. 
I'm just trying to give you an idea, okay? So what happens is the Americans see these German guys drinking these steins of beer. Boom, boom, boom. And they're used to it. It's part of their culture, right? And the Germans, you know, who they got attacked. The Americans attacked them and said, I like to call it an attack because you could have just let it go, you know, I, in my mind, because it's a different culture. But they said, you know, um, we didn't want to say anything to you. We're going back to America, the Americans said. We didn't want to say anything to you, but, you know, we just think you Germans drink too much beer. In other words, that's not a good thing, you know, you know. And the Germans replied with, well, we didn't want to say anything to you either, but you want to know something? We think you women wear too much makeup, okay? You know, American women wear a lot of makeup. And the German women oh, don't wear as much, you know? It's a different mindset. And this is what I mean by traditions getting in the way. And So, are you a Christian or are you a follower of Christ? You can be called a Christian and not follow anything. Uh, you can be called a disciple and you better be following something or something about Christ. And I don't mean something. I mean the word of God. That's what I mean. Okay. Now, how do you become a better disciple? I showed you my book, right? You can get things like, and some people are going to really dislike me for this, but uh, the King James to me, let me show you something. You know, I got the New American Standard, but I also use the King James a lot. Uh, this is King James, okay? And this is uh, King James, uh, the Hebrew, Greek, Key Study Bible. Now, you may not be able to get this. I don't know if it's out of print or not, but an expert on these languages, Spirit Sotiatis, Greek man, uh, Greek uh, scholar, per I say, um, he puts his notes in here, and it explains it, the Bible, to you a lot better. Because there's notes in there, right? Um, here's another another one, okay? Um, I have a, this is what they call a commentary, okay? And you can get very in-depth commentaries. And you can get volumes of commentaries. And there's what they also call systematic theology. I have the best systematic theology that has ever been created by Lewis Berry Schaefer out of Dallas Theological Seminary. He was the chancellor who started the whole organization there. And uh, I think it's seven volumes. But this is a commentary. And if you don't understand a certain passage, you can look up here, you know, and study some of this stuff, you know, and it'll give you more insight on what's going on. Now, this is a real in-depth one, okay? Um, some people like this and some people say stay away from it. But it's, it's still a tool. The Amplified, this is New Testament, Amplified New Testament, okay? I don't go into this maybe once every 10 years, but... And, you know, let me tell you, this is a commentary also, okay? Uh, this is a Nelson Quick Reference Commentary by Warner Wearsby, okay? Chapter by chapter commentary in the Bible, all right? So... You got to get some of these books if you really want to be a disciple, all right? And understand, okay? And this is um, another another commentary. This is more in depth through the Bible. I don't know if you ever remember that that uh, program on radio years ago with J. Vernon McGee. I love the way he talked. He was cool. <laughs> I love that man. Um, and this is very in depth. I mean, to me, this is like oh, you know. He can write a whole thing on one verse, you know, and it's not a bunch of gibberish either. It's, you know, good, decent stuff. And then, you know, you could even get yourself a Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. And I would suggest getting it in the King James because, uh, you know, you could look up any word in the Bible and you could find out what it means in the back with uh, the Greek and the Hebrew, and um, what it really means. I mean, it gives you the different sheds of light on it, and that's how you can develop better, okay? And uh, I was using these tools even before Bible college a lot of times, and then seminary and so on and so forth. So, but I got a whole ton of stuff, you know, um, and I just go and go and go. 
but you don't have to go and go and go, but you, you know, that's how you produce more understanding and knowledge for the Lord, okay? By uh, using tools. And some people say, well, I, don't want to, I only want the Bible. I don't want any of that stuff. That's an error, okay? Um, maybe some people have trouble reading and that's all they want is the Bible, but, you know, that's an error. You can get yourself something in, in, in an easy fashion of reading, too. But if you get yourself a good study Bible, you're on the right track to start with. And once you get sunk into it, you might want more. See, there's a hunger, a hunger that you need for Christ. If you have that hunger, you're doing the right thing. If you don't have the hunger, what are you doing? You're just existing. And Christ wants us to be moving forward in ministry of some sort, whether it's in a church or not. And sometimes churches don't provide a ministry. You know, I know there are tons of people going through seminaries and Bible colleges, and I'm going to be a pastor. And well, guess what? Guess what? There are no churches out there for them to take. Because you know what? A lot of it's driven by politics. Okay? And you don't want to get mixed up with all that junk. You want to stay in the Word, start your own ministry. Okay? It doesn't have to be licensed or anything. You know, you have a right to speak, you know, freedom of speech in this country still. Praise God for that. Okay? But even if you don't, you still have a right to speak the Word of God, no matter what. Okay? All right. That's all I got. Lord bless you. Okay? And uh, let's go on from here. Okay? Have a good week. Bye-bye.